Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Everything in my video was found on a public domain and the full disclaimers down below. Lots of love and many blessings your way. Okay, y'all, I'm going to tell you what I found out. Listen to this. There is all kinds of something happening <laughs> with this J.P. Morgan stuff. Oh, my Lord. So, they're saying that Meghan and Harry snuck down from Vancouver Island, mind you, to South Beach to show up at this J.P. Morgan's AIS to be the keynote speakers. Now, it's no secret where they stayed, according to the media. So, bright and early this morning, I thought, well, let me call them. I just, well, I'm curious to see what they'll say. I got a hold of the reservation line and asked them, will you stick me to the front desk? And they did. I couldn't believe my luck. I was talking a mile a minute, trying to get as many details regarding the J.P. Morgan's Alternative Investment Summit as I could. How long it lasted, what time it started, who all was there. And she told me it was not a one-night event or a two-night event. It was more like three-night event. And that this J.P. Morgan AIS was to end today. Then I flat out asked her, did you see Harry or Meghan? Did you see them in an entourage of security? She told me that she didn't feel like they stayed there. She didn't notice anything out of the way. I didn't want to give it a chance to end rudely, so I hung up the phone abruptly. After thanking her, of course. And I got to thinking later on, what if she had not been there during the time they had been there? Let me wait for a shift change. And I called back around 4 o'clock my time, and I spoke to a gentleman this time. This guy told me that this thing has been held there before in the past. He admitted that he has seen... You know, some big, big people come and go throughout his career there. And I didn't ask him how long he worked there. I didn't even care. I'm not trying to sound ugly, but that wasn't my point for calling. And I asked his opinion. Was Harry and Meghan there? He said he did not see anything out of the ordinary. No beefed up security wrapped around somebody. Nothing. The same old faces. That's what he said. I thanked him and we hung up. There are several websites that you can search if you have the tail number or the owner of the plane as to these private jets, their location, where they've been, where they're going, when they left, when they arrived. Now, I searched using the tail numbers of several private jets that the royal family have taken in the past, mostly Harry and Meghan. And for some reason, I don't know why, I can only imagine. Every one of those tail numbers came back blocked at owner's request. You have to have some sort of a special code to access any information on those routes by those planes. Finally, I found a shred of evidence via an article that I was reading, which published that a J.P. Morgan Chase Gulfstream was located. That plane took off from the Vancouver airport, and it ended up over there in Palm Beach, and it was about an eight-hour span in between. Sounds about right, I guess. Not that we can prove they were on it, you know. Either way, the lady told me on the first phone call to the hotel that the summit was an invite-only, very low-key hush-hush. I found that odd in itself considering J.P. Morgan Chase seemed to be extremely organized when it comes to their annual calendar. And the next thing I know, I'm reading all about this. They came in through a private entrance, they did their speech, and they left before dessert. She introduced him and he spoke. Am I understanding this right? For half a million dollars, she introduced Harry. And for a half a million more, he spoke to a room full of millionaires, billionaires, investors about mental health and how he missed his mother? That... It is so odd to me. Unless these great big bad wolves are there to learn the ins and outs of insane asylums, I don't think one has anything to do with the next. So I'm calling BS. And then after digging a little more, I was lucky enough to finally find somebody who knew somebody that was there. A cousin that was there says it was overly emotional rather immature, and audience was embarrassed for them. It rambled like listening to the drunk at the end of the bar, was how they put it. This is not an emo crowd. It is a business crowd. Emo and business are not familiar bedfellows. 
Boy, does that speak volumes. And shortly after I found that person's comment, this was the headline. Harry and Meghan's gamble with Brand Sussex. Royal couple risk being seen as tacky after taking J.P. Morgan gig that could have seen them paid a million dollars. I found something else that was quite peculiar regarding Harry and Meghan and the guests that was there or said to have been there. Now, if we're to believe this entire situation, they said Gail King was one of the attendees to this private event. It was just that very day that she was sitting at home it's clearly her house. Trying to apologize to all of Kobe Bryant's friends and fans that she totally offended. How can she be in two places at one time? Everybody who was there are starting to share their pictures from this event. Why not Harry and Meghan? Are they not confident in their decision? And we all know Meghan loves money, but what she loves even more is being front and center she wants to be the focus of that lens. I can't find any pictures of them at this event. You guys, we've seen the nastiest of the nasty in Hollywood. Make appearances. They have no shame in their game. And Megan and Harry have none in theirs. And someone I follow on Twitter retweeted this. And it's everything. Listen to this. Sorry, but this is Fridge Magnet Philosophy for Simpletons. Successful women are everywhere, speaking loud and clear. A fame and cash-hungry celeb manipulating millionaire husbands. For both is the antithesis of feminism. Way she uses the poor for PR purposes is obscene. Right there says it all, y'all. You think they're gonna really sneak in and out of somewhere? Hell no, they don't feel like they've done anything wrong. Just like she's setting up this photo shoot with paparazzi trying to get this stuff rolling again. And the moment everybody started making noise about, hey, that's not safe. She can't carry a dangling dead weight baby and walk two dogs at the same time. What happened? She had her people try their best to wipe the internet of that picture showing her with two dogs. But we're all just a bunch of halfwits to these people. They're banking on us for getting all about that second dog. We'll just shut up and get on about our business. That's how they live their life. So until I see a picture of them cuddled up in front of that J.P. Morgan step and repeat, I'll never believe they were there. And how people get away with that is this. Say Bozo the Clown was front and center at that J.P. Morgan Summit. He sat through the whole thing from start to finish. He may have gotten up a couple of times to go to the bathroom or go talk to a buddy. And he says to his wife the next day, I don't remember seeing the Fry Guys give any kind of keynote speech. I must have been at the bathroom. Nope, I bet y'all was talking to Pee Wee. I just wasn't paying attention. Now, if you're asking yourself, what's the point in that? Well, it's like this. And who's involved with this? Gail King, and even though Oprah was ticked off, she never left. She's still involved, too. All of these people that are involved in the background of Harry and Meghan's relationship, including the CEO of J.P. Morgan himself, I'm sure, will set this up because they, too, benefit from it in one way or the other. Trying to sell Harry and Meghan's presence as an asset versus a hindrance. And if so-and-so hears that J.P. Morgan was willing to pay this couple a million dollars, well, my goodness, we don't want to be behind. We want to be trendy, too, and have Harry and Meghan. And so it begins. And here's what was told to me as to what really took place regarding the Oscars. There's not been a main presenter in a couple of years. Now, it was told to me that Harry and Meghan's people actually contacted them, selling themselves, of course, like the J.P. Morgan gig. And the Oscars shot them down. No, no thank you. And I buy that story far more easily than I buy Harry and Meghan shot them down. They're both in a position where they're trying to earn their own way, right? Harry wants to be a house husband. He wants her to be a breadwinner. They were so desperate trying to find an income away from the royal family that they were willing to embarrass themselves by pushing up on the Disney guy. They had zero shame when they pushed up on him in front of Beyonce and Jay-Z. Begging for work, looking like trash. 
So to hear that they turned down the invite for their golden opportunity to get their foot in the door, eh -eh, I'm not buying it. I believe just as it was told to me, their people contacted them and they said, no thanks. Click. All right, y'all, I just wanted to stop in and share what I found. I hope y'all are having a great evening, and I'll see you soon. We'll talk fast. Y'all stay safe and be blessed.